Hey everybody, Adam Savage at Earl Hayes, maker of all printed ephemera for Hollywood since before there was a Hollywood. And when you want to shoot an extreme close-up of an object or a piece of paper in the movies, well, you can go get some special lenses or you can do what is the more common solution and you can simply have the object you need made extremely large. And Earl Hayes has solved this problem many times, haven't they? They absolutely have. In fact, they do it pretty regularly. That's amazing to me. Yeah, and it's a really common technique in Hollywood to just make oversized props, either for insert shots, gag shots, yeah, or yeah. it's just it's just an easier way to get that perspective. And this tennis racket, which obviously wasn't made by Earl Hayes Press because he only do printed stuff. Right is an example of that. It's an oversized shot that was there, an oversized prop that was actually just made, I believe, for an advertisement. Amazing. And instead of using a regular racket, they just went through the process of making a giant one. It makes me so happy. When I was a modeler, this is exactly the kind of thing I would have begged my supervisor to do. This oh, yeah. is the most fun kind of job to execute. It, it's, and it's, it's so fun to look at them, too, because you can't help but have that really strange, skewed perspective. Yeah. Because you're holding a giant tennis racket and it makes you feel tiny. Well, and this has a storied history. Famously in Dial M for Murder, which includes mm -hmm. one of the most famous, not split screens, but uh, split per, uh, split focus shots in Hollywood, which is the close-up of the phone while the phone's ringing and terrible things are happening. Uh, and the phone was famously built way oversized. Yeah, it's a it's shot gigantic. of Alfred Hitchcock dialing the phone and it's half the size he is. Mm -hmm. Um, so Earl Hayes has done this with printed material. Yes, all the time, as a matter of fact. And I have an example of it here. We have regular old driver's license. And so if you needed a close-up of this driver's license... You would use a large driver's they license. They make a really big one. Yeah, and it, it's, you know, I pulled one of the oversized, random oversized driver's license off the shelf. Yeah, yeah. But for, you know, you, you need to do a close-up of somebody's driver's license. This is really kind of too small. Right. And in the earlier days of film, cameras were not nearly as good as they are today. Copy. Which is where this kind of process has started. It, it made it so that the cameras didn't have to work so hard to get all these details that would otherwise be lost Amazing. in a normal size license. And it's not just driver's license. They make huge newspapers too, massive, oh. massive newspapers. So when you see the big inserts of the newspaper's headline, sometimes, not all the time, yeah. they were monstrous. They're huge, huge, huge things. But when they had the massive printers in here, they could make them, but those are long gone because it's not needed anymore. Amazing. It's a thing of the past, but they still do Magazine covers. Really? Very large magazine covers, as a matter of fact. <laughs> uh, this is an old, cleared license, or, yeah, uh, magazine yeah. cover from, from, I think this was made in the 90s. But this is how big they would be made. Yeah. And it was just so, oh, this magazine has a thing on it that's important to the plot. Right. Do right. that insert shot, and instead of trying to get a magazine focused just right, a regular yeah, size magazine, yeah. you would make this massive, massive thing. And this is, again, not uncommon even today in, 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 in film because very famously that wonderful trilogy filmed in New Zealand, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the ring that was involved in it was, was massive. Like big, it was yes. huge yes. for close-up shots because it's a ring. It's not going to show up well on camera. And it's still a process that's done today, and Earl Hayes still makes these things. Every day. I guess, I guess the way of looking at it for the director of photography is it makes the margin of error much... Uh, gives you a larger margin of error oh, yeah. for filming. And also, lighting for something really tiny is fundamentally different than mm -hmm. lighting for something that's normal size. Oh, yeah, it, absolutely. It's a very specific set of... And this... I, I love that these old techniques that yield wonderfully absurd objects like this. You also told me, and I had not, uh, this had not occurred to me, that most oversized props are just destroyed. Yeah. because For a very good reason. Yeah, you can't, you can't rent them. <laughs> They were only needed for that yeah, one. You need it for thing. the one shot. No rental house is going to keep these things, oh, man. so they don't they don't do any good for them. So oftentimes they're made for the shot, right? And then when the shot is done, they might sit around on the lot for a little while, but then they just go in the trash. Because large objects are literally one of my all-time favorite things. Oh yeah, they're, absolutely. They're, they're, the giant pencils you used to mm -hmm. be able to buy, all of Klaus Oldenburg's work. But, but you know that as well as I do that the larger the piece is for a film, the the shorter lifespan it has. Yeah, well that's because, true. Because it's you've got to pay for storage, you've got to pay for maintenance. I mean, how many massive models from film history have gone the way of the dodo because yeah. their size killed them? Yeah, it's really true. Yeah. Um, I love that Earl Hayes is still using this 
super old film technique oh, yeah. today. Well, I mean, it's done them so good for so long, yeah. and it's still needed. Amazing. It's still a valuable thing, and it's easy for them to do because yeah. it's just a thing that's, it's just another feather in their cap that they can pull from. So uh, it's, it's still, it's a lot of fun to look at these objects from a distance yeah. because yeah. they look real. Incredible. All right, I'm gonna go work on my back can. Yeah. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that video. I cannot tell you how much fun we had filming it. I wanna take a moment to thank Michael Corey, Props to History, and specifically Earl Hayes Press for their incredible generosity of the time and energy they have given us to let us follow along as they unpack and reveal the incredible history in this and all of their other buildings. And if you have been watching any of these Earl Hayes videos and content and wondering to yourself, how do I add any of that incredible history to my prop collection? You are in luck because Earl Hayes has started to make parts of their incredible collection available to the public. If you've ever wanted your own package of Smeet, well, you can follow the link in the description below and go buy it. This is just one of many things available and more will become available as time continues. Thanks again to Michael and Earl Hayes. See you guys later.